Hi, this is Sundin Bharti and welcome to Daily News. Microsoft recently applied to join a private Linux kernel mailing list that is meant for reporting and discussing security issues privately before they are made public. Why does Microsoft need to join this particular list and why does such a list exist in the first place when the kernel community runs its business publicly? Neither of the two is as complicated as it might seem. First things first, what is this list all about? It's absolutely true that the kernel community conducts all of its business in public with total transparency. Even if there was a possibility of doing things privately, Linux told us won't do it, as he told us in an interview. However, there is one exception, security. If a vulnerability is found in an open source project that affects Linux, Developers need a safe place to report that vulnerability and discuss it to create patches, test them, and push updates. Such a discussion cannot happen in public because bad actors will start exploiting those vulnerabilities as soon as it's posted on the mailing list, compromising billions of users. A private mailing list allows developers and vendors to report and discuss security-related issues so that they get enough time to work on a fix test on their machines and push updates to users. By the time reports becomes public, most systems are already patched. That's one of the many reasons uh, Linux vendors like Red Hat and SUSE have their patches ready when reports of vulnerabilities like Heartbeat, for example, become public. Alexander Pesliak, a security specialist and longtime contributor to open source community, created a private list called Linux Distros for the Linux kernel community to facilitate such reporting and discussion. Since the information shared with the list is extremely sensitive, there is a very stringent vetting process before anyone is subscribed to the list. You can't just hit the subscribe button and get onto the list. The members, once approved, have to follow some of the strictest policies to maintain embargoes. Also, it's not a list for lurkers. Members are expected to make active contributions. But why does Microsoft want to get on to a private list that's about Linux security? Well, if a company is shipping any product or selling any service that uses the Linux kernel, it should be on this list. Because the company must be aware of all such vulnerabilities so that it can keep its Linux-based offerings secure. Microsoft now is one such company. While Microsoft has been working with the kernel community for quite some time, it wasn't shipping any products or service with Linux kernel in it. Not anymore. Linux is fast becoming the protagonist of Microsoft's enterprise story. Uh, the networking switch of Microsoft Azure Cloud is running on a Linux-based operating system. Uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud now has more customers running Linux than those who run Windows. Uh, once again, Microsoft Azure is Sphere OS, which is an operating system for IoT devices. It runs on Linux instead of Windows NT kernel. And soon, Windows 10 will be shipping Linux kernel as part of the WSL2 program, which will actually make Windows 10 the most widely used Linux distros because it has reached to more than 90% of the market. So these later two cases Sphere OS and WSL turn Microsoft from a user into a distributor. Yes, Microsoft is joining the ranks of Red Hat and SUSE to become a Linux distributor. Uh, with WSL2, Windows 10 will become a distribution just like Ubuntu or RHEL. And if Microsoft wants to keep its Linux offerings secure, they need to be on this list and that's what it's all about in fact in fact leading kernel developers like greco hardman have been working with microsoft for quite some time to bring them onto this list when i talked to greg he said that i also suggested that microsoft should join linux distros a year or so ago when it became evident that they were becoming a linux distro and it is good to see that they are now doing so while being on a list helps Microsoft keep their Linux-based products safe, it also brings Microsoft's technical prowess to the Linux kernel community. It's a win-win situation. 
The big question is, will Microsoft be accepted? When Sasha Levine, who is a Linux kernel developer or maintainer at Microsoft, applied to join the list, the move was applauded by the community. Ku Hartman was among the first developers to watch for Levine's proposal. He wrote, to verify this, yes, I can vouch for Sasha. He is a long-time kernel developer and has been helping with the stable kernel release for a few years now, with full right permission to the stable kernel tree. Yes, you heard it right. A Microsoft employee has full right permission to the stable kernel trees that Linux users run on their machines. So there should be no doubt why Microsoft should not be on this list. Anthony Liguri from Amazon EC2 team also praised Microsoft and supported the application. Microsoft has been very active in working with the broader community on Spectre Meltdown style mitigation. I think the community would benefit overall from their participation on distros, he wrote on the discussion. However, it wasn't all praise. Levin had to prove to the community whether it qualifies to join the list or not. After a long and quite intensive discussion, it's all but certain that Microsoft will be accepted into the mailing list, possibly by the end of this week. As Alexander wrote, per our current policy and precedents, I see no valid reason not to subscribe Microsoft or parts of it to Linux distros. So I intend to figure out some details and proceed with the subscription. And once accepted, Microsoft will join companies like Oracle and Amazon who are already on the list. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye for now. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to keep updated with the daily news in the tech and open source world. Thank you once again.